I'm Dr. Hashim Aladi. I'll present here about SARPA studies. So I present a summary of SARPA studies, these studies that are multicenter, multi-national uh, studies comparing tirzabatide, a novel agent to placebo, uh, or to active comparators and patient with type 2 diabetes. Tirzabatide is dual, as we know, the dual GIB and GLB-1 receptor agonist, and is a multifunctional peptide based on the native GIB peptide sequence, modified to bind to both GIB and GLB-1 receptors. It's a 39 amino acids linear peptide and includes a C20 fatty diacid minority. In vitro, it has a higher uh, potency to native GIB and is less potent to native GLB-1. Uh, it has a mean half-life of five days, uh, which is enabling uh, uh, the one's weekly dosing. And the previous 26 weeks phase 2B study uh, showed that 5 mg, 10 mg, and 15 mg of tirzabatide demonstrate significantly uh, lowering HPA1C and body weight compared to placebo or selective GLB-1 um, receptor agonist, dolaglutide, uh, 1.5 milligram. The concept of combining of these two act, uh, actions in one peptide is exciting. Um, they uh, both have somewhat separate activities, but they have synergistic activities in causing uh, insulin secretion and improving glucose tolerance and decreasing body weight, uh, they are, uh, there are uh, some different of target effects. The most exciting effect of GIB is impact on lipid. So it does increase lipid sequestration that help lowering a glucose level, but also decrease inflammatory marker that come from the fatty cell. So this is a table which summarizes surpass studies. As you see here in um, SARPAS-1, uh, it's blinded and uh, uh, with 40, 428 individuals with um, not using any uh, anti-diabetic medication for at least three months, um, comparing to placebo. So the A1C is 7.9 and duration was 4.7 years, BMI 31.9. And SARBAS2, uh, which is open label with individual about uh, 1,879, uh, which they are using it for me as background. And uh, comparator was semaglutide, A1C was 8.2, duration 8.6 years, and BMI 34.2. Uh, SARBAS3, uh, open label and uh, about 1,444 individual. Um, background therapy, they are in metformin uh, plus minus uh, SGL2. And the comparator was uh, diglutic, A1C 8.1, duration about 8.4 years, and BMI 33.4. And go to uh, surpass 5, uh, splendid, um, about 475 individuals. Um, background therapy was glargine plus minus metformin and comparator is placebo. Uh, A1C was 8.3, duration 13.3 years, and BMI 33.4. All these studies were done in similar fashion. It happened to be showing the study outline for SARBAS-1, but the key uh, inclusion criteria for all studies uh, for type 2 diabetes, they have to have A1C at least 7%, uh, up to 10.5 in the most of the studies. The BMI for the most studies uh, was over 25 kg per meter square, and the weight need to be stable. They need to, um, to have stable background therapy for at least three months. Um, so the, the key exclusion criteria, including um, type 1 DM, 
um, uh, was excluded on history pancreatitis, and if the GFR is less than 30, and uh, uh, this is less than 45 patient was on background metformin, uh, and after screening period, and to be read and a uh, patient who randomized between three doses of terzabatide and the comparator. Um, they were started in 2.5 milligram and dose was increased 2.5 milligram every four weeks until they reach uh, their target, uh, targeted dose. The duration of study range between 40 weeks and 52. So the objectives, um, here go to the objectives of the study were superiority of placebo control study and non-inferiority for active comparators and primary. Objective was A1C change from baseline. And uh, key secondary objectives, uh, mean changes from baseline body weight proportion of participants with the HP A1C target values of less than 7% Main changes from baseline fast and uh, fasting uh, serum glucose proportion of uh, participants who reach A1C target less than 5.7%, which is considered normal glycemia. So our phase uh, go phase three, um, there's a batide GIB and GLB1 the receptor coagonist type, type two. Uh, diabetes reduction of uh, hemoglobin A1C. Uh, this, in the, this is a summary of studies and what you could see with the green bars being the comparators and the light blue that is about 5 milligram. The medium blue is 10 and the dark blue is 15 milligram. So you can see uh, at highest dose of terzabatide that we're um, more, more than 2% reduction. There were more than 2% reduction in A1C in all of the studies and up to 2.59% reduction in the surpass uh, 5. But what I want to you to know, even without lowest dose of terzabatide, uh, 5 milligram that was a good and better than active comparators of semaglutide for surpass 2 or deglutic for surpass 3. So uh, very, very effective A1C reduction seen in all studies and highest dose were superior to placebo also to comparators studies. In this slide, we go to A1C targets and persons. So the patients um, who were able to reach A1C targets of less than 7 persons in all the studies were around 90 percent and less than 6.5 percent were about 80 percent patients and achieving um, what considered normal glycemia with A1C less than 5.7 percent was around 50 percent all studies. Fasting serum glucose changes from baseline over the time and at 40 weeks, also want to demonstrate the marked improvements in fasting blood sugar uh, that have been quickly after the one set of study. And they are, um, and uh, here are the results of surpass one, but essentially show the same in all studies. And by four weeks, only 2.5 milligram of tirzabatide, you will see the reduction on fasting blood sugar about 30 point uh, by week four, and all studies were similar. The patient will be able to feel uh, the improvement of glucose control quite quickly with this one's weekly medication. And uh, also you can see again a dramatic improvement in overall fasting blood glucose. In this slide also not only fasting glucose was improved, uh, also there was a significant uh, reduction of big postprandial glucose level and in fact glucose excretion. Uh, were uh, reduced also. Uh, but what I want to say here um, that, that peak of postprandial glucose level was actually an average, uh, average within normal range in these studies. And again, this trend of all studies that have not presented in all cases 
um, glucose level were around 100 to 110 and big post prandial glucose level was less than 140 milligram and in addition to glargine the big post prandial glucose was actually less than 120 milligram which uh, I did not think it was seen within any other treatments. Here about um, weight loss, uh, you, can, you can see in the same color codes uh, that was dramatic weight loss um, when looking at 9.5 up to 13 kg weight loss at the highest dose. But again, even at low, lower dose, there is a significant reduction of weight. And if you compare in Sarbas 2, uh, the data related uh, to comparator semaglutide, even the lower dose of terzabatide had greater weight reduction than did semaglutide 1 milligram. Here, go to weight loss in percent. Um, at the percent of weight loss, uh, when using 15 milligram, terzabatide was between elephant to 14 percent uh, even on top of insulin glargine and there is uh, 11.6 in percent in surpass 5 study uh, the end of treatment different between glargine and tizabatide was 12.6 uh, percent if you look at the percent of weight loss between 77 uh, to 88 percent we are able to achieve loss uh, weight, uh, loss of weight about greater than 5%. And 47 to 69% were able to achieve loss weight, loss of weight about greater than 10%. And 27 to 43% of patients were able to achieve loss of weight uh, about 15% or more. All of, all of agree that this approach is expected um, expect to be uh, seen with bariatric surgery. We'll talk here about GIT adverse events. Now, um, the gastrointestinal side effects from terzabatide are very similar that we see with GLB-1 receptor agonist. Uh, so uh, those will, will be nausea, vomiting, this, uh, dyspepsia, diarrhea, and loss of appetite. You can see the orange being uh, no, nausea uh, up to 10, 20% of uh, range. Um, for red is diarrhea about 10% range and vomiting was less frequent. It's about 2 uh, to 10% range. If you look at the incidence of nausea through 40 weeks of studies, uh, you can see 5 milligram and those with 10 milligram and 15 milligram and uh, compared to semaglutide 1 milligram. Uh, of the little uh, grade uh, boxes are, uh, are the time that the medication was being titrated. So you can see again the nausea rate uh, a, little, a little bit higher in 10 milligram and 15 milligram. Uh, because they were continuing to be titrated to the appropriate dose. But it's very similar. They numerically, uh, perhaps higher frequently, seen adverse events in trisabatide compared to semaglutide. But reach is statistically significant, uh, but uh, not reach the statistically significant in the comparison. You will go to this continuation from um, the study, uh, generally in the 5 to 10 percent range, slightly higher in the 15 milligrams are past one, uh, those uh, so withdrawal due to uh, adverse events, uh, about 5 to 10 percent range with higher frequencies with increasing dose and higher than placebo and comparators. I'll talk here about a summary of the key clinical outcomes of and application for trisabatide from the SARPAS trials. Uh, so in summary, in people with type 2 diabetes, an adequately controlled with diet and exercise alone and uh, or with methamphetamine and insulin glargine, once weekly trisabatide 
which is a dual GIB, GLB-1 agonist, uh, demonstrate that uh, robust reduction in glycemic control, significant reduction of body weight, normoglycemia, which is defined as hemoglobin A1C is less than 5.7% without increased risk of hypoglycemia. Thank you.